Hey, Cap City, so glad to have you here today, and, and uh, I'm hoping you're doing well. We're going to continue this series on making room. I'm really excited about this. I'm going to be speaking uh, two weeks in a row uh, on making room for the Holy Spirit. And as I was putting my finishing touches on the message yesterday, I heard God say, bring in the big guns. And I was just thinking about that. And God, what are you saying about this, bringing in the big guns? And, and what I looked it up, and the term means this, to bring in or to make use of your most powerful asset for a given task. And the example that was given is that um, somebody chopping a piece of wood, and, and, and essentially the axe is getting nowhere. Let's bring in the dynamite. <laughs> that will definitely take out that tree. So the reference is to bring in a very important and powerful person. And, um, and so today, um, I was thinking, what is the big gun? Well, it's our dynamite. It's, it's our most powerful asset that God has graciously graciously given to us, it's the Holy Spirit. And so I want to talk about that. I, I believe today, and honestly, after being in ministry four generations, God, that seems a lot. Over 40 years, I, I've, I've seen the body of Christ, and I feel that we're there today. Many have inadvertently um, limited the most important, the most fulfilling, and the most powerful relationship uh, available to us in the Holy Spirit due to the lack of maybe misunderstanding or misconception about Him, the Holy Spirit. So today what I want to do is I want to go back to the beginning. I want to help us. I want, let's go through the scriptures, and uh, uh, I want us to gain a full uh, understanding of who he is and what role he plays in our lives. And here's the thing that I want you to understand and what I want to convey. I want us to make sure we don't devalue what we carry. Let me say that again. I want to make sure that we don't devalue what we carry. And so um, I've been thinking of some misconceptions Um in the natural realm, like cleanliness is next to godliness. Well, that is, that's nowhere in the scriptures. Just somebody made that up. How about the thought of the misconception of a, an ostrich doesn't stick his head in the sand uh, when it's scared? Because many times you'll see that depicted in a cartoon where, no, it falls to the ground and it plays dead. That's what an ostrich does. How about daintish pastry? Well, surprisingly enough, it wasn't it was actually invented in Austria, and it was inspired by Turkish, Turkish baklava. How about George Washington and, and uh, the, the thought, the misconception about he had wooden teeth? Well, he didn't. He had gold. Listen to this. He had hippopotamus ivory. He had lead and human and animal teeth. The poor guy, he just... He was half man and half beast, wasn't he? How about this one? Bulls are enraged by red. No, they're not. They're enraged by the motion. It's another misconception. How about this one? When you think of a Viking, what do you think of the horns? No. It wasn't until the 19th century, and there was a play about the Vikings, that a, a clothes designer invented the horns for the Vikings. Isn't that amazing? And here's one of my favorites, another misconception, that Twinkies have a really long shelf life. Anybody into Twinkies? No, it's only 25 day shelf life. It's not like it's in the movies. They find them after 20 years and they eat them. No, it's only 25. How about today in the church? Misconceptions about the Holy Spirit. Some Christians, they, 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 they have the misconceptions as well. And that's why I want to dig down deep on this. Um, you know, the, the, the misconception is if the Holy Spirit, if rivers of living water come out of our belly. And so some people think that he's the size of a peanut living in our belly or, or, or our heart. No, 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 no. He's, he's not the size of a peanut. 
Some people think it's strange and mystical. Uh, well, mystical in the sense of um, the supernatural, but not mystical in the sense of, uh, you know, witchcraft and things like that. I mean, it's like, it's like, you know, somebody says, oh, yeah, I drove around the block. I was really looking for an answer. I drove around the block three times. And, and you know, every time I drove around the block, there was somebody staring at me three times. And then I looked up and I saw three clouds in the sky. And, um, you know, I got the goosebumps. And I knew for sure, ah, the Holy Spirit was there talking to me that I was supposed to my, ask my boss three times for a raise. Well, that's just kind of spooky. I'm sure the Holy Spirit could move like that, but he's got a bad rap for just weirdness like that. Or how about this misconception that the Holy Spirit is just a mere influence or a force. It's not a person. It's really like an it. Obviously, that's not scriptural. And that's why I want to dig into this. Number one, I want to talk about who is the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? He's God. He's God. Let's read in Acts 5, uh, verses 3 and 5. And uh, Ananias was saying, uh, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. So the Holy Spirit is, is related to, in the sense of, to God. 1 John 5, 7 says, There are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, or Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. So what do we have? We've got God the Father. Who was he? He's the creator of the universe. We've got God the Son. Who is he? The mediator between God and man. He gave his heart. He gave his life for us to provide the power for living, helping us, comforting us, and saving us, actually. And then you have God the Holy Spirit. It's present here, now on earth. Jesus went up, sent the Holy Spirit here, living in every Christian, providing power for living. That's what the Holy Spirit is, helping us, comforting us, teaching us, and guiding us. Um, I know sometimes that could be confusing, but it's three distinctive personalities in one God. And, and, and how I can explain that is myself, <clears throat> as Dennis Pisani. I'm a son of my mom and dad. I'm a brother to my sister, and I'm a father to my children. I'm one person, but I have three distinct different roles, and that's the same thing with Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so, as you can see, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, as we read in the Scriptures, it's not an it or just a mere influence, but the Holy Spirit is a person. If you don't know Him as a person, then... How can you ever de develop a, a, an intimate relationship with him? And so these are this is food for thought based on Scripture. Uh, and so uh, that's who the Holy Spirit is. He's God here on earth. Number two is the simple question, how do I know I have the Holy Spirit? And that there's misconceptions about that, but let me just clear all that up, if I may, using Scripture. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says this, um, Don't you know that you are God's temple and God's Spirit lives in you? That's pretty simple, yet profound. The moment we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior through the miracle of the, the, the spiritual birth being saved, the Holy Spirit takes up residence uh, in our spirit. That's it. We're the house of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so, but he's the source at the same time as uh, the ongoing process uh, that's happening in you and I of the changing and the transformation of us into the image of Christ. 
and that's and that's why he's here amongst many reasons in order uh, to help change our attitudes, our emotions, our character, and our actions. So he's here to help us. He's living on the inside. And he's always with us. That's what the scripture said. He's always with us. He goes where we go. He sees what we see. He hears what we hear. And our physical body is now the house in which he lives in. This is called the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And this happens at the time that we give our hearts to God. So we're finding out who the Holy Spirit is. He's God. We find how do we know that we have him? Well, the scripture plainly says that we are now the temple of the Holy Spirit, that he lives within us. And then what role does he play in our lives? And there's, there's a plethora of things that, that how he serves us through the ministry, his ministry to us. I call it the ministry of the Holy Spirit to us. And, um, and so, uh, once again, we're going to go to Scripture, and we're going to find out about this. Uh, John 14, 15 through 17 says this, If you love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, which, which uh, in the Amplified it says, Comforter, Advocate, Intercessor, Counselor, and Strengthener, to be with you forever. Now, how long is ever? Forever. That's how long he's with us, forever. It says, The Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he remains with you continually and will be in you. Uh, that's pretty clear. That's pretty clear. And so I'm just thinking, man, that's, that's amazing that when Jesus was on earth, he was with the disciples. And it was expedient for him to go. He established he established uh, himself. He actually established God through himself on earth, gave us examples, taught and trained the disciples. And then he said, it's expedient for me to go away because I'm sending you the comforter. I'm with you in person, but the Holy Spirit will be in you to help you. And so I love that. So the amazing promises that he's given us, I, I love this. He's our intercessor in Romans. He talks about, and I love this because how many like you and, uh, and, and myself, you know, you go to pray and you just don't know how to pray right. Well, he says that the Holy Spirit prays the mind and the will of God. What does that mean? That means when we pray, we could miss it. But when he prays, he hits the target every time. He's praying the mind and the will of the Spirit. We'll talk a little bit uh, more about this next week when we talk about the empowerment of the Spirit. Uh, but and then he says he's our counselor. It's somebody to talk to, to share our burdens, to share our hearts with. Um, honestly, I do this. I do this all the time, all day long. When I'm working or whatever, I'm having conversations with the Holy Spirit all, all day. You know, and very simply, you know, not religiously, like, um, yeah, what do you think about that, Holy Spirit? Or, you know, uh, wow, did you see that? Um, you know, I'm just constantly talking, and I'm and I'm hearing, and He'll usually talk to me in scriptures or or whatever, but. You know, we got this conversation going on, and I love this. He, he's really concerned at what goes on in our lives. He's not. So we have the confirmation that he remains with us continually. So even when we don't feel that he's around and we don't feel he's hearing, it doesn't mean he's gone anywhere. That means he might not be talking to you at, at that certain time or whatever. Um, but it's because he's concerned about what's going on. He wants to help us. Um, through difficult times, I like to look at it as he's a sh he's he, he's a shoulder. He's a shoulder, and uh, everybody needs a shoulder to lay their head on. 
and just share their heart and their thoughts and whatever. And that's what he is. Make use of that. Make use of that. He's there specifically for that. The third thing is an advocate, somebody who pleads our case before the Father. This is like a this is like, like Moses did for Israel. He's like a high-powered lawyer. And, and then the scripture says he's our comforter, somebody who understands our struggles and comes alongside of us and comforts us to help us. He empowers us and helps us to break through what we're going through. Man, I mean, if that's all he did, that's truly amazing. In John 14, 16, it says this, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter to be with you forever. And I'm, I'm, I'm going back to that because I, I, I want to explain that Jesus is saying this. He says, I will give you another comforter. Jesus was a comforter. I'm giving you another comforter. Now, it, what that word in the Greek means another of the same kind. So this is Jesus talking. And, and, and then what he's really saying, he'll be just like me. He'll be just like me. He acts, he talks, he behaves. He thinks he works the same nature as me. Why? They're one and the same. I believe what he's saying here is we're identical in every way. If you have him, you have me. And, and, and I think, to a lot of folks, I think that could be confusing, but this kind of clears it up. And then the comfort, it, 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 the Greek is parakletos, and that word para, it means to come alongside like a partner. So he's coming alongside of us as a partner, and he'll begin to speak to us. He'll call us. He'll give us instructions. He'll, he'll empower us. And wh why am I reemphasizing this? Because we haven't utilized it. We, we're talking about bringing in the big guns. No, no. In the sense of the thought of the big guns is one thing, but he's in us. We don't have to bring him. What we have to do is release him to do his ministry. And you and I are the subject of his ministry. And I think either sometimes we forget about it, sometimes we don't know, and that's why I'm taking my time to teach you. This is very simple teaching right now, and uh, it, but, but it's profound. It will change your heart and change your life. And, and many of you have already heard this, because every several years I teach this. Why? Because it leaks. Sometimes we forget. We get caught up in small little dinky things like two years of COVID, you know, and the situations that we're going through, let's not leave him out. He's here specifically for us. And, and it's not that we're calling down heaven. Heaven, everything heaven has, has been deposited in us by the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand that. We're not calling anything down from heaven we're releasing the Holy Spirit that's within us. Years ago, years ago, when I didn't have a full understanding, I'd be, oh, let, let the anointing come down. Let God come down and give us miracles or whatever. And, and finally, I closed my eyes and I, I saw this picture of this big valve. And I was holding on to the, the, the wheel of the valve. And God said to turn it. And I turned it, and it was hard to move, and I turned it, and it released the water. And he says, the Holy Spirit, you're not calling him down. You're releasing him. You're releasing him because he's already on the inside of you. Instead of releasing our natural abilities or our, our, our natural logic and reason, let's release the Holy Spirit on that which we might be going through because he sees what's ahead of us as well and he can give us that instruction. So um, so in that comforter, the para from Paracletos, it means to come alongside and he will be here to speak to us, to call to us, give us instruction. And, and it brings the idea of ed, he's our advisor, he's advising us, counseling us, and, and it gives a connotation of being like a coach. Um, and a coach, it's like Bethany came to me, my daughter, 
and she's she's um, had a desire to play baseball. She says, "Would I would I kind of coach and teach her a little bit?" And I did. I I, uh, I, I showed her how to how to stand, how to hold the bat, how to uh, fluctuate her body, and 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 put her. Uh, uh, hips the right way and you know the whole thing uh, how to catch properly or throw properly um, I didn't play on her behalf I coached her on how to do it and that's the same thing as the Holy Spirit he's here to coach us and to guide us we don't have to rely on ourself because self will be deceiving plus he's got the power to do it and we don't <laughs> This was the same thing Jesus did for three and a half years uh, as he walked alongside of his disciples. He was their comforter, advisor, enabler. He was their coach. He did it by example as well. He coached on how to heal the sick, how to cleanse the leper, how to cast out devils, uh, how, how to uh, forgive, on how to love, essentially how to live a life as a believer. And then when he went up, he sent them out to do it, just like us. He set us out to do that. And so essentially, you know, what Jesus was saying here is I taught you how to talk, how to think, how to love, how to teach, how to live as a follower of mine. Now that I'm leaving, and this is important, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit to pick up where I left off. Oh, that's incredible, just thinking about this, as a comforter to you. And he will continue to do the exact same thing that I did for you. So he's just here continuing the work that Jesus did, enabling us to do life here. And so um, this is tremendously foundational. If you don't get this, then you're going to be walking lopsided, um, you know, relying on your flesh more than you are the spirit. And we're spirit beings. Um, you know, we live in the flesh, but we're spirit beings and having communication with God. We need to understand that we have the ministry of the Holy Spirit working for us. Would you decree that with me now? I have the ministry of the Holy Spirit working for me. Me which means alongside of us, partnering uh, uh, in us and alongside of us, like I said. Um, he's speaking to us. Pastor, I, I don't know if he is. Not, no, no, no. He's speaking to you, and he's here to help us in every area. What to do, when to do it, when to talk, when not to talk, what to say, when to take action and when not to. He's speaking. Let me give you an example. You're in a conversation and you're about to make a statement and all of a sudden, in the back of your mind, you hear, no, I probably shouldn't say this, but, and you go out and, t and talk about it. And there's adverse effects of what, what you said. Then you're thinking in your mind, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. That's the Holy Spirit. He was talking to you don't say that. You probably shouldn't say that. That happens to us a lot, not just on what we shouldn't do, but what we should do. He's there, remember, to speak to us, to guide us, to teach us. And he does this all the time. And you're thinking, I, that's myself. No, that's the Holy Spirit talking to you. And so, so many times, um, is it crazy? incidences. You, you might come home and your spouse has had a long day and you start to say something and the Holy Spirit says, um, I, I just, I wouldn't do that right now. And you do anyway. And there's a little argument going on up in here. That's, he's saying, don't spill the beans. Wait for it. And so he, he knows the timing. He knows the other people's hearts. And especially, you know, as, as believers, our ministry is to people and to reduce, reproduce our kind and through them and just, you know, reach people and serve people. And it's really important that we learn to hear his voice and his guidance and his instruction to us. I had a, uh, my pastor, actually, uh, a friend of mine sold mobile homes 
and he had this one triple wide mobile home. This is years ago, and he had a certain price for it, and he did everything he could to sell it. Everything, even hid $10 bills throughout the thing just to get people to go in and check it out. It's just crazy advertising. He came to my pastor and said, I don't understand. I can't, I just can't sell that thing. And he said, let's pray. He prayed and, and the Holy Spirit said, uh, charge $10,000 more for the house. And my friend said, that's crazy. I can't even sell it at this price. But he said, if that was the Holy Spirit, he says, I'm going to do it. He went and put the sign on. It was $10,000 more. He sold it that day. Now, I don't know all the ramifications and everything that goes behind it. It's not up to me to understand that or them. When the Holy Spirit speaks, he goes before us. He knows the future. And so I thought that was really cool. That happens all the time to us. But it's us paying attention and being aware that that's how he moves into our, our lives. Oftentimes it happens for parents and their kids. You could you could you could you could talk to all four of mine. It usually happens with Donna more than me, but God will speak if they're in trouble or this or that about their lives and will approach them and say, How did you know? Well, it's the Holy Spirit that speaks, watches, and tells. It's very cool. This is not crazy. So he said, Man, that's kind of weird. No, 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 no. This is the supernatural ministry of the Holy Spirit assigned to help you and me. What it does, it goes past this, and it, and, and it's about our heart on the inside that the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. This is how um, things function in the kingdom of heaven. And so we're actually bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. We live here. But there's a kingdom that we're part of that's very supernatural. Uh, actually, this is quite indicative of everyday life, kingdom life in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. They're interchangeable, which you or I are a part of. And the Holy Spirit is here to help us to understand and to function in kingdom of God life. You see, the challenge, and, and this is for all of us, the challenge is, is that we've been so used to the way things work in the natural or the earthly realm that it takes time for us to begin to grasp or understand the way things function and work in the spirit realm. And the Holy Spirit is here to help us to do that. And so we're actually bringing heaven to earth and how we function and how we operate through the Holy Spirit. So the good news is that that's the job of the Holy Spirit to help us in that. And he's here to teach the ways of the kingdom. And our job is to basically listen and to obey. Well, actually, first of all, is just to understand how he functions. And I don't want anyone to miss or to, to misunderstand. I want to make sure that we don't devalue what God has done and what he's given us and what we carry on the inside. It's a very powerful thing. We're going to be talking about another aspect of the Holy Ghost. That's the power of the Holy Ghost, and that will be coming next week. Uh, today we talked about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Next week we're going to talk about the overflowing power in us and through us. So the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit is essentially for us. The empowering of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, Acts 2, is empowering them for others and to do the acts of God. And so I hope, I hope you've gained a further understanding. Today it was just very simple teachings on the basics of the Holy Spirit and, and, and his ministry to us. Number one is, uh, what role does he play in our life? Number two, who the Holy Spirit is, or that's number one, who he is, and then the role he plays in our life. And, um, and, and number three is, uh, 
He's here relevant to us to move and to work on our lives every single day. Learn how to lean on him. Learn how to trust him. And we're going to just see victories and breakthroughs like never before. I believe for this 2022, there's been a scarcity of the power of the Holy Spirit, the the leaning on the Holy Spirit, because so many other things were there to overwhelm us. But I believe that this year we're going to bring in the big guns and not bring them in, but we're going to release the big guns within us that we can see those breakthroughs and those miracles. And it comes from us understanding it and then releasing him in our lives like never before. I, I just want to, I just want us to declare something in our heart for this year. Can we do that together? Go ahead and repeat after me. Holy Spirit, I open my heart to you. I want to hear your voice. I will follow your guidance and your instruction, and I will commit to be bold enough to do what you say in Jesus' name. Now, obviously, there there, there might be some people listening that you've not experienced the Holy Spirit. You've not experienced the new birth of turning your life over to Christ, and I'd love to pray with you right now. Would you, if, if that's what you want, this is what you get and more. The most important thing is, is that we just learn that there's a there's an amazing way of life that we haven't lived yet. And God is here to come in and to bring you into that. So if that's you, would you close your eyes right there? Let's everybody and let's just pray this right now. Some of you, you might have been close to God and you've walked away for whatever reason, but let's pray right now. God In Jesus' name, repeat after me, God, in Jesus' name, I come to you now with my heart open. I know that you died for me, and your blood was shed as a scrubber to wash away the sin in my life. I give it to you now, any disobedience, my past, and any any sin in my heart and life, I give to you now. Would you take it away for me? Would you forgive me? I know that you died on the cross and you arose to heaven. And now you want to invest in me to come in my life. I open my heart to you now. I invite you in to live your life in me by the Holy Spirit. And I I ask you to make me, shape me any way you want me to be. I'm, I'm yours. And I thank you so much for lifting the burdens and taking away the oaks. I love you, Jesus. Be my Lord and Savior today, now, ahora, in Jesus' name. Amen. The greatest thing you could have ever done was that right then and there. You've now just opened up your heart and life to a whole new amazing way of living. And so allow the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do. And we're going to talk about the empowering of the Holy Ghost next week. So tune into that. Listen, we love you. You have a blessed week.